So this week we're talking about the film Robot Jocks. And Robot Jocks was uh, produced by Charles Band and directed by reanimator director Stuart Gordon with a screenplay by the Hugo Award winning sci-fi author Joe Halderman. Charles Band is the son of director-producer Albert Band and brother of composer Richard Band. Okay, the we, Band brothers? The whole family, they have a long history in uh, Hollywood. Keeping the band together, I guess. It's a new age of combat. Human beings, genetically engineered to be the best fighters in history. Two champions. It isn't over until someone wins. <laughs> At war with each other. Kill it! I have already killed you. Two invincible men. Let's finish it, Alexander. Here now. The ultimate killing machines. I'm gonna get in this thing! And I'm gonna kick your robot jocks. At its height, Empire would uh, release an average of two films a month, one theatrically and one on home video. Movies released by Empire include Ghoulies, Ghoulies 2, and the cult classic Reanimator. Empire folded in 1988 due to financial difficulties. Band then uh, founded Full Moon Productions the same year. Full Moon, sure. You've heard of Full Moon? I've worked on a Full Moon. Oh, lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> in, in Vegas or here? Uh, it was here out in the, in the desert when I first moved here in 2012 or whatever. Robot Jocks ended up being the second to last film released by Empire Pictures. And as a result of Empire Pictures' financial difficulties, the release of Stuart Gordon's Robot Jocks was delayed by several years. This may have been detrimental to the film's success because Robot Jocks, it feels dated even by like 1990 standards. I'm gonna get in this thing! And I'm gonna kick your ass! <laughs> this movie did bomb and it barely made more than a million on its $7 million budget. I think part of the reason why this movie didn't do good mm -hmm. is just because it, it came out too late. It's a very 1980s film. Sure. It's about the Cold War with like Transformers and like pro wrestling and like American Gladiators iconography. Sure, sure. So I don't know, I was kind of on the fence uh, about Robot Jocks, but I think I'm actually gonna recommend this one. Okay. Yeah, the good. plot and the and the characters are not good, but it does deliver some pretty decent robot fighting and has a, a very strange like anti-war theme running through it that makes it kind of more interesting than most like shitty low budget PG movies. Sure. Yeah. The fact that this movie is still in the PG realm is kinda crazy because they do some stuff that you definitely can't do in a PG movie anymore. It just works. It works, and I think I'm gonna give it a, a four stars. Yeah, three stars. Uh, the tone is all over the place. Robot Jocks feels like it's not sure if it's a PG movie or a more edgy PG-13 or even like an R-rated film. There's a lot of cum references and nudity for a PG film. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It feels more like something that would have been produced by Disney in the 90s and Empire Pictures in the 80s. But it's, it's interesting despite its faults. If you wanna see uh, $7 million worth of stop motion in the, in the late 80s, like, you know, here it is. There you go. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know how many other movies there really are that did this much stop motion robot shit. No, I mean Ed Two Hundred Nine in RoboCop. You know, that's eighty-seven, um, and that was pretty good. You know, stop motion effects and whatnot. This though, the effects really scale. Like I, they they worked. You know, it's like a, some of it. With Power Rangers, you know, it's some of it. Some of it looks like cheap shit, and some of it does actually look pretty good. Mm -hmm. Some of the costumes and art direction is kind of oh, shitty. It's kind of goofball. It feels but very seventies almost, right? Yeah, it feels in, very old. In its corny like cardboard walls. Maybe they put a lot of the resources into the actual robot fights and kind of cut corners with the other shit because mm -hmm. it's all about the novelty of the the, robots the robot fighting, fighting, right? Yeah. But hey, man, if you want to check out uh, Robot Jocks, it's streaming free currently on Tubi, and I think it's also free on Amazon. Yeah, it's free, free on Prime. That's where I watched it. I think this was Stuart Gordon's attempt to sell out and make like a movie that would appeal to kids and make a ton of money. Mm. And unfortunately, that was not the case. He was never able to really cash in off of that broad appeal, and Robot Jocks just kind of remains a misstep full of shitty characters and out of place sex jokes. That's why I'm recommending it. Yeah. <laughs> Robot Jocks takes place 50 years after a nuclear holocaust. A, a huge portion of the population has been wiped out, and the surviving nations have been consolidated into two nation states, the American-influenced market and the Soviet-Russian-influenced confederation. They're called the market versus the confederation? Yeah, just because they're capitalist. Oh. 
A lot, there's a lot of satire in this movie, by the way. I like the world building of all of it. Like, oh, yeah. It, it, all, it all works. This is maybe, again, ham-fisted, but... The Soviets and the Americans have agreed to outlaw traditional war and said all international disputes are settled with gladiator-style matches between giant robots operated by pilots called robot jocks who have almost professional wrestling-like names and personas. And each robot jock is uh, contracted to fight 10 matches. The uh, Confederation champion is a man named Alexander who has killed his last nine opponents and is set to face off against the hero of the film, Achilles, played by Gary Graham. And Achilles has also won nine fights as well and is now set to fight his final match against Alexander for the territory of Alaska. And, uh, you know, what can I say about Achilles? He's got a facial scar. He does fake karate against men in leotards. <laughs> it's all, all pretty unremarkable. In fact, both of these characters, the antagonist Alexander and the protagonist Achilles, they both suck. <laughs> they both suck? Yeah. I don't <laughs> Alexander is so two-dimensional. Alexander, yeah, he's yeah. played by Paul Koslow, who was like a guy who used to be like in the Mission Impossible TV show. Oh, yeah. And it's this hacky, like 1960s impression of a German, I guess. I don't even think he's a real German guy. Maybe he is a real German guy. I thought guy. he was supposed to be Russian. I will make your death interesting. And then the Achilles character isn't very likable either. I think maybe they were going for like a 70s anti hero type thing. Right, kind of like, uh, what's his name from Death Race? Uh, Frankenstein. David Carradine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gary Graham is like a terrible choice for a heroic lead. He looks like a rat, and he's just like <laughs> very not charismatic and forgettable. Uh, kind of generic. It's not even that he's generic. Like, he's ugly. He's an <laughs> ugly man. It's not like... Usually you'd go see a movie like this, and like the heroic lead would be like some big, strong, handsome Super guy. Super buff, yeah. He doesn't look believable as an athlete. He doesn't look believable as a robot jock. He's not <laughs> believable as a lead in a movie. It's just like... It's almost like the, the lead dropped out last minute, and they had to throw a fucking Gary uh, Graham in there. This guy. And cover up that ugly face with a scar or something. <laughs> you know, we got $7 million, but we're going to spend it all on the stop motion. Let's just get the shittiest actor possible. But I don't know. Uh, again, I, I, he, w he, was, he was plain Jane enough to kind of be an everyman, Gary. Oh, yeah? No, I don't know. I'm just trying to be Did uh, you relate to uh, the character of Achilles? Yeah. Yeah, Gary, I never go to a dentist either. <laughs> In the future, they don't have dentists. No, why would they? Yeah. They, yeah. they, they let robots settle their, their, their war scores. Uh, Achilles' mentor and strategist is a man named Tex Conway. And Tex Conway is the only robot jocks in history to win all 10 of his contract fights. He's played by Michael Aldridge, who uh, looks kind of like JR from the WWE, except his, his face isn't half paralyzed. And the U.S. also has a program to create genetically engineered fighters called Gen Jocks. Right. They also try and collect Achilles and Tex's semen for the program, to which uh, Achilles jokes that he'd rather impregnate one of the new recruits. <laughs> This is another interesting choice for a PG film. For a PG movie, yeah, it's not. He's it's a little bit just casual misogyny thrown in there. Welcome to the future. Yeah. You know. What does misogyny mean? It's uh, it's uh, you know, anti. Uh, it's, it's against women. You know, it's. Uh, you don't know what misogyny means. Do I've you? never. It's cut it out, Gary. Cut. So during the big match for Alaska, Alexander launches a rocket fist at Achilles, which sends him into the, the bleachers, killing over 300 people. Pretty crazy and dramatic scenario for a PG movie. This like huge robot just slams into the stands where all these dystopian poor people are watching. These future people, by the way, they're most likely paying for the robot wars with their tax dollars. So all these like seemingly destitute, starving people are cheering for this giant robot fight, which probably costs hundreds of billions of dollars. And if these two countries could just like settle the dispute peacefully, they could then use their resources to improve the standard of living for their actual people in the countries. <laughs> Instead of spending all their resources on building giant Gundams, which are regularly <laughs> destroyed fighting over Alaska. All the time. Unfortunately, both the American-influenced market and the, the Soviet-Russian-influenced confederation have their respective political systems in the grip of the giant robot lobby. And after the nuclear apocalypse, both countries transition to a mostly giant robot-based economy. So the robot wars have to persist so that the remaining humans can have jobs working in the giant robot factory and the giant robot companies can continue to grow shareholder profits. It's all part of the very complex and interconnected robot industrial complex. Mm. This is, this is key to the, the, the story of Robot Jocks. Okay. I learned all about this from Noam Chomsky in the 90s. 
If I was smarter, Gary, these jokes would be like. I don't know. If, I don't know if that was any good. To be uh, honest with you. you think that was funny? Let, let the let the people decide. Yeah, yeah. Give a thumbs up if you like that Noam Chomsky joke. Well, I could read it again. The referees declare the match between Achilles and Alexander a draw and order a rematch. But Achilles is racked with guilt after accidentally killing hundreds of attendees, and he decides to retire, considering that he has actually technically fought the required number of fights to fulfill his duty. Right. I mean, if you serve that many, you know, duties in, in the line of service for your country, yeah. and that was what the contract was, you'd also want to give up. Yeah. You'd also want to give up, you know, your country and let it fight itself or whatever. Um, but actually, uh, I want to jump back. Those referees, the referee characters, they seem like nonpartisan. You know, they're sure. almost, they're, they're, they're neutral territory. Isn't that the whole point of a referee? What's that? Isn't the whole point of a referee? Sure. But are they controlled by one country or another? Or are they like Sweden? They're like their own floating society of referees that like, we don't care that, you know, you killed a lot of people. That's irrelevant. We don't care this. That's irrelevant. All that matters is what we rule. The character of Alexander, I guess, is like homicidal and he, he, he kills his opponent when he's not supposed to. Yeah. He kills referees and stuff like. Yeah. Isn't it like a war cr- crime? Is it- yeah, right? To go against the rules of the war? Yeah. yeah. He's just allowed to just murder people? I guess so. Yeah. Who's going to stop him? He's got a giant robot. After Achilles retires, he goes to what I guess is the Robot Jocks bar, where all the other robot jocks, including the new genetically created Gen Jocks, are hanging out. And uh, Achilles is getting shit-faced because he's racked with guilt after being seemingly responsible for the death of hundreds of people. Then Alexander, the villain of the film, just walks in like it's TGI Fridays. Like, so uh, they just hang out at the same bar. Mm-hmm. Isn't Alexander like a war criminal? The whole movie starts with him like killing somebody. Well, yeah, that's why everybody turns off the jukebox as soon as he walks in. Stops yeah, yeah. talking. You know, just the just record skips. Just ruins the whole vibe of the party. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if this is like brilliant satire or just dumb. Right, or like trying Why to make can't a it point? be both? <laughs> yeah, right, maybe. Like, just like any piece of art, Gary, you, you can read it for the artist's intention or what it currently stands as. Also, the depiction of a, uh, a soldier suffering from PTSD in a PG film is strange. He's having like flashbacks, killing yeah. all the people. Yeah, and right. Some weird solarized effects going over top of it yeah. while he's like, oh, the children's bodies. <laughs> Well, it's just weird because, you know, this movie's like independently made in the 80s, but most of the shit like this that we've seen is usually like corporate shit and it's so pro military. Mm, and like, yeah, sure. It's, this is such a weird angle on it. So, not necessarily a love interest, but the, the woman Achilles is attracted to is this uh, somewhat androgynous, genetically created woman named Athena. She's one of the uh, gen jocks, as they're referred to in the film, or tubies, as uh, the other jocks refer to him as. There's a scene where Tex Conway and Achilles are in the locker room with all the gen jocks, and they all start undressing together. It's very weird. They're all, like, training in leotards, and someone just yells, hit the showers. And then, like, out of nowhere, all the gen jocks start undressing, and there's, like, just a shot of one guy, like, pulling his pants down with his ass pointed at the camera. And then Achilles just stands there and stares dumbfounded at Athena's tits before she walks away, revealing her bare ass. Again, very strange choice for a PG film. And for some reason, sci-fi movies in the 80s were obsessed with the idea of gender-neutral changing rooms, but couldn't foresee the trend of gender-neutral bathrooms. <laughs> sure, yeah. So at this point, uh, Achilles is retired, and he goes back to stay with his family. His brother, uh, who is a professional reader. <laughs> right. Right, yeah. In the future, uh, people are all illiterate. Yeah, people can't read. Including Achilles. Right. Yeah, which I, is very strange. He's capable of piloting this complex robot, but he can't actually read. Can he read? It doesn't really make a lot of sense, right? Well, they show everything on video. He never yeah, has sure. to read anything. He's all just told all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, Robot Jocks' interpretation of a dystopian future. <laughs> Everyone has to wear a mask. All the women are androgynous, and no one reads. It's actually not that off. <laughs> Aside from, like, the nuclear war, they're kind of nailing it. Yeah, right. In Achilles' absence, Athena, the genetically engineered woman that he was uh, borderline sexually harassing, defeats the other gen jocks in a competition to replace Achilles. A competition, by the way, which involves booby-trapped monkey bars. <laughs> yeah. Did you like they, that br- scene? they bring them all, all these gen jocks into this room, and they're like, you got to climb this jungle gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so stupid. They're like, you guys got to climb this jungle gym, but we put KY jelly all over it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to electrify your balls when you try to climb up it. 
How about a competition that involves piloting the robot or something? <laughs> You know, or like fighting or fucking something. Stuart Gordon saw American Gladiators. I'm like, oh, yeah, that'll be the future. That'll be well, if climbing on greasy monkey bars. <laughs> I guess, you know, robots are expensive. And uh, in the future, they didn't have... Um, yeah, you can't do like a practice run. Yeah, you can't do practice with a robot. You just break it. When Achilles hears that Athena will be the one to fight Alexander, he decides to break his retirement to return and face off against his cartoonish nemesis, Alexander. Which is kind of strange because... I'm not sure, like, what the motivation is here. Right. Is it because it's a genetically modified person or because it's a woman or is his, uh, what, like, what exactly is his motivation for suddenly returning? Isn't he racked with guilt after killing all those people? Yeah. It's, it's either that he's trying to protect her. He loves her and he knows that, uh, Alexander's going to cut her head off or whatever. Right. He's going to stomp on her little body with his giant robot legs. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's kind of logical. Yeah, sort of, but he doesn't really love her. They've interacted like three times. I don't know. No, the actual chemistry between her, him and her is, is non-existent. Very, yeah, it's bad. In fact, mm-hmm. I read that the actual chemistry between them in reality was bad because of, again, political views. And it shows. On the day of the fight, Athena drugs Achilles and uh, steals his suit before commandeering the robot. Tricks him, though. First, she's going to like, she looks it's like she's going to take off her top. And show him the, the goods again, but instead... Show him her non-existent breasts? Her nipples. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't... You know, yeah. Nipples She's very the, flat-chested, which honestly makes sense. If you're going to pilot a robot, you probably don't want big stupid tits You can't have boobs in, in the way. Yeah, yeah. You're going to climb up a jungle gym real fast, faster than anybody else. Boobs are just going to weigh you down. Get yeah. in the way. You know, uh, women, female archers back in the day... Cut their tits off. Cut their tits off so you can you can do it. Boobs, boobs get in the way. Gary, I think... Um, in school, we all we all all men who, who don't have boobs have need to wear like a bra full of like the weight of a boob, just so we know that it's really a burden to have breasts. You know, Russ, I agree with you, and uh, you know, from the other side of the equation, I would just like to say I, I get very jealous of trans men because I would also love to get my tits cut off. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you have, because you have tits. Yeah, well, I'm getting a little fat. Oh, okay. You just cut my tits off and call me Elliot. The market is unable to stop the fight once Athena takes the field, so they decide to support her. And meanwhile, Matsumoto confronts Tex, who turns out to be a, a turncoat and a, a Soviet spy. Yeah. Yeah, which I, I think this is also uh, very purposeful. I think uh, they're trying to mislead you. They want you to think, oh, it's going to be the, the Japanese guy is going to be the spy, and actually it's the, the Texas. It's the Texas. The very American it's guy. It's the most American guy, guy there. Yeah, yeah. His name is Tex, like Texas. <laughs> he wears a fucking cowboy hat, Gary. He sure does. This guy's America as hell. And yet, here he is, betraying America. Yeah. And headshotting a guy in a PG movie. Yeah. <laughs> Blood all over the back. I was also like, I know this is shot as a PG-13 movie. I'm not sure if the version that we're watching is actually PG. Oh, yeah? Maybe we're watching a version that's unrated or they added all this shit back into. I don't really know, but it does seem like... Because that's a pretty violent kill. To yeah, and well, then, then Tex jumps off a fucking bridge and kills himself. <laughs> <laughs> like they show this shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's shit's pretty wild. And this is when Achilles arrives on the field and takes over the robot from Athena. Athena's almost going to get stomped on, right? Yeah, he saves Athena. Uh-huh. Gives her a good smooch for good measure, you know, while she's passed out or whatever. Yeah, and then and this uh, is uh, where both robots just kind of like take off and there's like a, a bit of a space battle. Yeah, they go to space. I almost yeah. forget about that. Because <laughs> it's short and there's no reason, real, real reason to do it. But there's no they, reason to do but it. But they do it. If I could blast off. And what I liked about this, Gary, this mm-hmm. sequence, well, one, special effects for no reason. I love it. Two, when they're doing this space battle, there's no sound in space. What? That's great. Other movies don't do that. There's always some sort of sound in space, you know? But, like, the explosions hit on the outside of, a, of the robot doesn't make any noise. Inside, the guy hears it because you have air and whatnot, but... But yeah, it's one of the few movies to actually like get realistic space going on. So realistic detail in robot jobs. Yeah, exactly. Do a better job than gravity. 
Yeah. And the ending to this movie is actually uh, pretty great. Notably, uh, at one point, Achilles' uh, robot transforms into a tank. Yeah. And Alexander sprouts a chainsaw dick, and then the, the evil robot... Kills the good transformer by face fucking it. Yeah, he face fucks it with a robot <laughs> with a with a chainsaw penis. The the penis chainsaw massacre. Do you? There's no way that wasn't an intentional penis. <laughs> you know, it's not like oh, and then he traps it with a chainsaw. We don't know where else to put it. It comes out of his crotch. That doesn't make you know. We can't have it come out. Any, they could just have the chainsaw come out of the robot's chest. Yeah, it could have been his arm. It could have been anything. Could have come out of his back. It's all stop motion. Do whatever. Yeah, yeah. But instead, it like his crotch opens up and now <laughs> chainsaw, and then he face fucks it. The chainsaw dick might be one of the more memorable uh, parts of this movie. What do you What do you make of that? What do you mean? Do you think this is representational of uh, Alex's uh, uh, homoerotic lust for our lead character there? Oh, yeah. So he got out of it? <laughs> I don't know. What's he doing? Busting out his dick and chainsaw fucking him in the face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? It is definitely a strange placement of that chainsaw. Russ. Right. So do you think it's insult or do you think it's uh, his feelings, his actual feelings? Maybe robots, that's how they have sex. They just chainsaw each other. <laughs> like bed bugs. You know bed bugs, they don't have vaginas. The male bed bug just stabs just, the female bed bug ooh. and just comes in the hole. Nasty creatures, dude. I don't want. You ever had bed bugs? I've never had bed bugs. I don't know how you'd even get that, but I don't It's not, not really not a big thing in uh, the West Coast. Sure. It's like a New York thing. Is it? Bed bugs, yeah. Mm. Little pests, you know. They're terrifying, dude. Yeah, it's awful. I don't mm. want bugs living in anywhere. Drinking your blood at night? Duh. It's like the real life Dracula. Yeah, but it's your bed with yeah. nasty parasites in it. Yeah. Ugh. That's a horror movie right there. Yeah, right? Make a bed bugs movie, bed Russ. Bed bugs, yeah. It would just keeps like coming over to have sex with this person, but they got bed bugs. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and this person just like stabs him with their penis and comes wherever he wants. Ugh. <laughs> nasty. Achilles flees for cover to the arm of Alexander's robot that uh, Athena had sliced off earlier. And Achilles hotwires the arm to launch its uh, fist at Alexander, destroying his robot. And Alexander emerges from the wreckage, and the, the two battle with uh, poles before Achilles finally convinces Alexander that a match does not have to end with the, uh, the death of a jock. You can live. Yes, if I kill you. We can both live! We are dead. We are robot jocks. It's like a surprisingly poignant and well-written ending to such a fucking stupid movie. And it almost feels like, like a classic movie ending. Cold War movies were more anti-war than shit you see nowadays. Oh, yeah. It's like even like that Rocky movie where it all ends with him talking about how the war is stupid. It's like... No, we want war now, Gary. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now the CIA makes the movies and they fucking tell you what to think. <laughs> yeah. And you get shit like Zero Dark Thirty. And, and it's uh, like a huge blowjob for CIA. What's is that? it? Yeah, there's just so many of them, you know? Yeah, yeah. A lot of the movie is just seemingly like pretty... Politically neutered and like kind of dumbed down, and then at the end you, you get this surprisingly like poignant and smart ending. Also, they said shit a lot for being a PG movie. I only see PG movies, Gary. So yeah, I know. You'd get scared. <laughs> yeah, it's very scary. Those, uh, those PG thirteen movies scare Russ. No, 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 don't even say your name. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the stop motion in Robot Jocks? I thought it was good. Yeah, I yeah. mean it's obviously stop motion, but um, there's you know it's not just stop motion throughout the movie they do like weird puppetry and probably backwards stuff or whatever and it's not quite star wars level but they're, they're right. trying to like make like an indie star wars almost it honestly it's it's the reason this movie is as good as it is, is if not for the robot battles it's it's fine but the robot battles won't make it like yeah, and I guess and what's so. unique about it is just the amount of money that they would have put into a low-budget movie like this. I feel like if they had made this in 96, it would have been a lot cheaper with digital shit. Oh, yeah. It would have looked like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie. It's kind of like the difference, I guess, between Empire Pictures and Full Moon Films. There was just a little bit more money in the theatrical releasing. Mm. And For Empire? Full, 
Yeah. Yeah. And then and Full Moon became more of like a straight to video business. Mm. You know? Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> Good old Full Moon. Ghoulies made a shit ton of money. That's what really made Empire. Was that like Critters? But. Yeah, it's like, I think it's a Critters ripoff. Is, yeah, cool. Was there another one? Yeah, no, I think it's a Critters ripoff. Or Gremlins. Gremlins, yeah. It's a, Critters is a Gremlins ripoff. They're all... <laughs> they're all ripoffs. They're all ripoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're all Gremlins ripoffs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Classic. Um, do you feel like this was a ripoff of anything? Transformers? Yeah, sure. Inspired by Transformers. And, you know, there's just so much fighting mech stuff in... Not in America, though. It's actually kind of... This movie stance is kind of a unique thing because there's really not that many big giant robot movies from 80s in America. Right, right. Most of that shit's Japanese. Right, right, right. Fighting, fighting mech robots is yeah, yeah. anime for as long as you can recall. Right? Gundams is a big thing in uh, Japan. And that was out in the 80s, right? I guess so. It must have been. It might have been out before that. It might have been from the 70s. I don't know. So, the idea of giant fighting robots... When did Super the, Saiyan start? What's that? That's the thing that got turned into Power Rangers. Oh. Um, I think it's from the 70s. Sure, I can believe that. The Japanese had to do something. Couldn't just... just sit around and be sad. Yeah. They lost World War II. Make some animes. We got to start playing baseball and making giant robots. It's pretty logical. Honestly, what I want to see next is giant robots playing baseball. Yeah, yeah. That might save the MLB. Robot jocks. Literal robot jocks? Yeah. Robot athletes. Yeah. Uh, but who think they're cooler than everybody else and push yeah, them into yeah. lockers. Yeah. And they're trans, so no matter what gender they are, they could play in either league. Yeah. Yeah. Gender neutral robot jocks. <laughs> yeah. No chainsaw dicks. No chainsaw vaginas. Yeah. Just a chainsaw. Yeah. I don't know if it's exci- as exciting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if robot jocks is uh, something that could be uh, brought yeah. back. Yeah. I think Transformers kind of took Yeah, Transformers spot. did it. But I don't know. That's it. Robot Jocks. I guess we're both recommending it. Although yeah, it's really look- not like even top five Stuart Gordon movies. Yeah. You've seen so. you, Castle Freak and all those other ones. Are way He's way made some him. bangers, dude. Yeah, Castle okay. Freak, Reanimator, Fortress. Sure, uh, which we reviewed. You know, he's made some good movies. Okay. I love you. Boys, I'm not going to be able to be. Why you know me? How high time is passing? Yet, I'm going to be able to be.